Last night, it was the Colonials' defense that stood the test to take game one against the Bentley Falcons. Now the Colonials look to do the same thing in game two, but the Falcons, with their backs against the wall and season on the line, look to upset Robert Morris. It's game two as Robert Morris takes on the Bentley Falcons in the first round of the Atlantic Hockey Conference here on, any, or on the Colonial Sports Network. Welcome everybody to Colonials Arena as the Bentley Falcons will take on the Robert Morris Colonials here in game two of the Atlantic Hockey Conference first round playoff game. Hello everybody, my name is Spencer Wood. Alongside of me, Ian Kiss. Ian, in game one last night, the Colonials defense really standing the offensive pressure of the Bentley Falcons to take that first game as Francis Murat and the defense really stood up and were able to get just about a shutout. I mean, I think a lot of it came with, you know, like I said, my key to last night's game. One of them is protect Frankie in goal, and that's what the Colonials did. And if much of it's like you see it tonight, I think the Colonials will be you know, headed to the next round. We'll take a look at the highlights from that game. And like you had mentioned before, protecting Marat. Marat was, had a lot of pressure on him for several shots from the Falcons. There were no score in the first period. And it was actually a fairly quiet period, but then the offense started to come alive for both teams. In the sense, as we see here, this is the first goal from the Colonials, and it was perfection. Timmy Moore, look at that pass to Alex Tonge. Assist of the year. I mean, he, he put it right on the blade, knew where Alex was going to be, and it's a beautiful, beautiful assist, beautiful goal. Tolino gave him a little, a little hole to fit it in, and boom, the Colonials take advantage. It was assists from Brady Ferguson and, of course, Timmy Moore. And basically a perfect play. You couldn't have done any better than that. Look at that pass cross ice. Tonge putting it into the goal. Polino for, Net or for Bentley had no chance on that one. Take another look at that replay. And you see going to Alex Tonge. And that was the goal that separated it. But then the Falcons trying to come back, trying to get back into this game. And like I had mentioned during the broadcast last night, it basically took perfection to try and get a goal and try and get past Marat. I mean, he was he was on game. The pressure has been, you know, at him for the past few weeks. I think he answered, even though he took a loss last week against Air Force here at Colonial's Arena. But just the saves he made, really impressed. And this team, you know, a lot of people questioned if they have what it takes. Like I say, right here, beautiful. But if he keeps up, this team, this team can can win this conference tournament. The Falcons did get one goal as it was perfection from Francis Marat for 59 minutes. And Kyle Schmidt, our player to watch for the Falcons, getting a goal off of a couple of deflections from Skates. The final score, three to one. We'll talk about that last minute and how the score changed from one nothing to three one very quickly. Let's take a look at last night's scoreboard. AIC defeating Niagara four to one. AIC taking a 1-0 series lead. They will play tonight as well. And of course, RIT, a bit of a scare coming from that last seed, Sacred Heart. They win five to four in overtime. Yeah, RIT was a three nothing uh, earlier in the game before in the second half, second period before the Pioneers could, you know, kind of make a comeback, but that comeback obviously failed as we take a look at the Atlanta Hockey Playoffs bracket and where, where the teams play this week will go. We know that if the Colonials win, we will be, they will be headed to the number one ranked Canisius. Either Bentley or Robert Morris could take on Canisius. And of course, we'll also be watching AIC and uh, Niagara and RIT and Sacred Heart. We will go to a quick commercial break. Before we go, do not go anywhere as we have game two of the first round of the Atlantic Hockey Conference playoffs here on the Colonial Sports Network. Think about everything that you save. You save gas, you save money, you save time. But have you ever thought about saving life? That's right, life. In just one hour, you could save up to three lives, giving three people more time with the ones they love. And isn't that the best thing to save? The need for blood is as universal as it is constant. Save life, 
give blood. What do you wish for? A nice life? Nice things? Or do you wish for something more? A sense of purpose? Do you wish to discover a cure? To write code that cracks an unsolvable question? To further our exploration into space? Or to invent something that changes everything right here on Earth? Well. If that's your wish, make yourself ready. Because when you look back, you'll see that you didn't just make wishes, you realized them. Hurricane Harvey brought terrible destruction but it also brought out the best in humanity. As former presidents, we wanted to help our fellow Americans begin to recover. Our friends in Texas, including Presidents Bush, 41 and 43, are doing just that. People are hurting down here, but as one Texan put it, we've got more love in Texas than water. We love you, Texas. Donate to oneamericaappeal.org. We are all in this together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back here on the Colonial Sports Network as we're getting ready for game two of the first round of the Atlantic Hockey Conference playoffs between the Bentley Falcons and Robert Morris Colonials. And Ian, taking a look at the season statistics, what really sticks out in your mind, your eyes? Oh, uh, it's the goals against the 102 for Bentley. Can be the difference. So the Colonials have the better, the better record of you know goals against. So to me, that's, you know, a, another key, if you want to add a fourth one, is, um, you know, both teams uh, do are neck and neck in that category. So both teams neck and neck in that category. And we'll take a look at the last minute summary of last night. It was one nothing for most of this game, but a goal from Brandon Watt off of a turnover. The Bentley Falcons were on a penalty kill, just trying to get out of their zone. They couldn't even do that. And RMU capitalized on that play. It's a turnover given to Watt, and he was able to score. And, Taking a look here, this is the goal from Bentley. Kyle Schmidt just throwing off it towards, towards the net, and it goes off of two skates from the Colonials and in Francis Marat's five hole. And that was a bit of a life for the Bentley Falcons. They had pulled their goalie, but they lost the face off, and it was Alex Tonge who was able to take it and put it into the net easily for the third goal. And that basically sealed the deal with seven, only four seconds remaining in the game. Colonials won the faceoff, and then that was the game. Three to one, the final score between RMU and Bentley. As taking a look at a graphic of the game, yeah. Brandon Watt scored with 19 minutes and four seconds gone in that period, and then Bentley pulled their goaltender, and a goal by Kyle Schmidt gave them some life, but an empty net goal by Tonge sealed the deal. And the Colonials did well at previous weeks; they couldn't finish. You know, they they you know, had a hard time. You know capitalizing, but last night they sealed the deal with that open net and then to our keys to the game, keep up block, down defense. Our key last night was to protect Francis, Murat, Frankie, and net. They did so, and they played well defense. Then let Bentley a lot of times get too close to Frankie and stay off the penalty kill. A lot of penalties last night, the game got aggressive. Don't be, don't make the boneheaded plays with my key last night. And then be aggressive, be, be aggressive. They literally broke down the Colonials last night, or the Falcons rather. And we'll, if the Colonials do that this evening, I think they'll get out here with the sweep. Colonials looking to do that and sweep. And we will send it down to our PA announcer, Larry Snyder, to give us the opening lineups between Bentley and Robert Morris. Now let's meet tonight's starting lineups. First, for Bentley Falcons on defense, a freshman from Leo Minster, Massachusetts, number 14, Matt Lombardosi. <laughs> on defense, a freshman from Calgary, Alberta, number 28, Charlie Marchand. <laughs> At right wing, a senior from Menominee Falls, Wisconsin, number 20, Kyle Schmidt. And left wing, the sophomore from Gurney, Illinois, number 19, Jake Capula. 
Back center, a freshman from Smithers, British Columbia, number 15, Luke Santerno. And in goal for Bentley, the safety, the sophomore from Oakville, Ontario, number 30, Aiden Polino. And coach for the Falcons is Ryan Soderquist. National anthem played. Both teams will go towards their respective goals to huddle up. And it's getting ready for game two between the Bentley Falcons and the Robert Morris University Colonials. I think one of the big storylines in this game is how well will the goaltenders play? Aiden Polino getting the start again tonight, along with Francis Marat. Both these goaltenders, I think, arguably had their best games last night. Unfortunate for Polino giving up two goals as we take a look at the netminders from last night. Polino giving up two, Marat giving up one. I think all three of these goals really weren't their fault. I think they really had nothing that they could do about it. 37 saves yep. for Marat, and then a point nine. Is that, uh, you know, assist from uh, Timmy Moore. I mean, nothing Polino could really do. He was, you know, two against one in a way. And just, you know, and I mean, unfortunate that the goals happen. But, you know, it's the playoffs. So, but again, you'll see how both teams had a chance to, you know, evaluate after the game last night. You know, near 24 hours to make some changes. So we'll see how both teams. So it's interesting the second day of a, of a series to see how the teams come out and some differences you'll notice in their play. Ferguson and Santerno both lining up for the faceoff as we are almost underway here at the Robert Morris University Island Sports Center in Colonials Arena. 
The referee giving the signals. And the face-off will be underway here as the Colonials winning the face-off and then Bentley taking over. Ferguson forward to number 20, Timmy Moore. Moore with it. Moore takes a shot. It gets deflected and into the netting for a stoppage of play. So the Colonials will have a face-off to the left of Aiden Polino in Bentley's zone. First shot of the day goes to Robert Morris. Same players out there for the faceoff. Ferguson and Santerno. And the Falcons win this faceoff. Taken forward by Capula. Capula gets it taken away from him. And then finally pushing it forward is Schmidt. Schmidt will push it all the way around and Bentley will change their lines. Elias Gantu sending it forward off the, off the boards. Tonj touching it up, so no icing. Callen pushing it forward for the Falcons. That's Drew Callen. And then Callen, after pushing it forward, is taken by Robert Morris. But Callen gets it back. They go past the line. Bonjay coming in and almost hitting him. We were talking last night. The Colonials were very physical. It seemed like every shift they would hit. Bentley with a big hit, and you yeah, know, we hear we hear our play-by-play -play commentator Adam Maluso get excited. He was very excited last night because it seemed like every 20, 25 seconds there was a big hit from Robert Morris. Yeah, I mean they they did it smart. They didn't you know uh, commit a penalty while doing so. As you know, the chippiness is already starting here, Spencer. You mentioned penalties. <laughs> yeah, it's. I believe we're gonna have our first penalty of the game. That's Luke Lynch and number 26 for the Falcons. Matt Seekhouse, we're getting into it together, but the Falcons will go on a penalty. It's Drew Callen, who I believe is gonna get called for a slash. So the Colonials will be on a two minute power play to start this first period. This is, you know, a good test for the Colonials here early. You know, to execute on the power play, that's one thing that Coach Schooley always, you know, is prideful of. It's the Colonials' power play opportunities and chances. And here the Colonials have a chance to, you know, take advantage and go up early. Colonials win the faceoff. Israel gets it back at the blue line, sends it over to Lynch. Lynch's shot goes wide. Moore was trying to deflect it in. Taken back by Robert Morris. Israel with it. Israel throws it forward looking for Lynch, but that one's out of his reach and it will go all the way back. And the Colonials will have to restart, but Bentley applying some pressure here. They're gonna take it forward, Buchanan with it. Buchanan gets it taken off his stick by Alex Tonge. Tonge will take it for Robert Morris. He will send it forward. Player put a stick on him and then Lynch with it. Lynch, that's back, sent over to Tonge. Tonge with the shot, it is deflected. Another shot and they score! The Colonials score on the power play as Timmy Moore off of a rebound. Polino desperately trying to make a save, could not. And Robert Morris takes the first goal of the game. Yeah, the Colonials are the place applying pressure. And when Polino has to go on his back, got to take advantage. And that's what the Colonials just did. The Colonials are, that's one thing that they are, you know, prideful of is their penalty play and this is a good way to start this game take advantage of what Bentley gives you Colonials could not or did convert actually correction on one power play last night that was late in the game and they will convert again here early in the second game continuing where they left off and now shot by McDonald is saved by Marat Marat I don't know where he caught that at it looked like he kind of just kept it in his shoulder taking a look at the replay Shot by Moore, and I believe he did get it forward. I don't know if Lynch touched it or not, couldn't tell, but it is a goal for Robert Morris. Polino was everywhere on that play, just trying to make saves, but it was too much for him. There'll be another penalty on Bentley. I believe it's going to be another slash. We saw Watt lose his stick. This time it's going to be number seven for Bentley. That's Connor Broussard. Broussard will go into the box. Colonials converted on their first power play. What can they do on their second? You know, maybe some frustration already by Bentley. And the Colonials look nice and crisp on the first, being patient on the first penalty. 
Colonials win this face off. Israel over. Sent across, and that one deflected away and taken by Bentley. Bentley will move forward. Grigowski just sending it forward, killing some time. But here comes Luke Lynch. Lynch skating forward. He stops, pulls up, and sends it into the corner all the way around to Tonge. That one taken out by Bentley, and the Colonials will have to retreat. Eric Israel with it now. Israel goes all the way around his ice. He's got Hamlet tracking him down. He sends it back to Ferguson. Hamlet all over these. Bad pass there taken by Bentley. McDonald with it. McDonald's just going to waste some time, go around in the corner, cuts back. He's got Marshan with him. Marshan takes a shot, and that one saved easily by Francis Marat. So not the same power play we've seen. In fact, I believe Bentley had the puck more than the Colonials did in the first minute of this power play. One thing I didn't notice, though, is Bentley just looks, they look tired. They don't look as fast as the Colonials do right now. And, you know, that was, you know, a pretty, for me, weak opportunity that they had that the Colonials gave up there as they're trying to, Falcons are trying to kill this minute of this penalty they committed. The Colonials still showing their dominance so far. Second line of the power play on for Robert Morris. Schmidt will send it all the way down, and the Colonials will have to treat. That's Loria coming all the way back. Capula is in hot pursuit of him. Loria stops, looking to try and give it to Powers, but Schmidt's there, so he's just going to have to do a spin, and he'll send it over to Graham. Matthew Graham with it down the left side. Sent forward to Perkusik. Perkusik behind the net, and then cycled all the way around by the Falcons to kill some more seconds as Marat will have to go out and get it. 30 seconds remaining in this power play. Robert Powers with it. Forward to Michael Loria, but it's off of Loria's stick, and Lombardozzi will send it down. The Colonials will have to restart again. Powers with a bit of deja vu about 10 seconds ago, right back to Loria. This time it's on his stick, and Loria will send it down after going back to the red line. A couple seconds remaining is a big hit. This is Watt now, Watt with it. Back to Gantus, Gantus shot, deflected in front. Watt with a shot, that one deflected again. Bentley returning their player to the ice. Power play, not converted for Robert Morris. Santerno with a great move, his shot. And that one blocked away by Marat. Santerno gets it back though, deflected away. Buchanan sending it off the boards. Back to Santerno. Santerno trying to make a move, but Watt's able to get his stick on it. Bentley will have to retreat, and they'll send it back around and change their lines. 15 minutes remaining. We've got five minutes through this game. Two power plays already. Colonials able to convert on one, but not the second. Capula with it, mid-ice. Taken back now by number 27, Jacob Coleman. It goes back to Israel. Israel goes back to Gantus. Gantus forward. Graham touching it up. No icing as he touched it. Graham gets it now to Coleman. Coleman behind the ice. Big hit on Bentley at Schmidt, pushing Coleman down. And that physicality is going to win Bentley the puck back, and they will send it out. The Colonials will take over again. Alex Bonje. Bonje's pass gets deflected, and Robert will have to come back for it. That's Alex Robert sent forward towards Graham. Graham to Mantenuto. Mantenuto touching it, but he can't hold on to it. Sent all the way back again now, and here come the Falcons. Forward Zafonte battling with it. Big hit on Tonge. Marshan with it. Marshan throwing it towards the net. Deflects wide. Mantenuto with it now. Mantenuto. That one goes towards Lombardozzi. Lombardozzi catching it and then trying to throw it forward, but Mantenuto was there for it. Bentley just sending it around, trying to switch their lines. Fast-paced hockey going on here between both these teams. Offsides for Bentley, but Robert Morse will take over. Moore trying to get it to Ferguson, could not. Bentley will take it over. Callan with it. Callan to Buchanan. Buchanan forward. That one goes wide of Israel. And a shot blocked away. Here come the Colonials. Alex Tonge with it. Three on two for Robert Morris. Tonge looking to throw it towards the net, but there's nobody there for that one. Bentley will take it over. Seekhouse, that one forward, but it goes to Ferguson instead. Bentley was on a shift on their, on their defensive men. Big opportunity, and Luke Lynch can't hold on to the puck. Oh, it was a two-on-one. 
As Seekhouse was the only defender for Bentley back. Watt with it now. Watt takes a shot, but it doesn't go off his stick well. And it's an easy collection for Aiden Polino. And play stops. It is immediate timeout. Immediate timeout. We will take a timeout as well. Do not go anywhere here. The Colonials, a first goal early in this game two here on the Colonial Sports Network. What's this? That's my resignation letter. You're resigning? Why? Because you're constantly ignoring me. You're half as active as you used to be, and you get stuff like this. You've been putting me under a lot of pressure lately. That's why I'm ready to quit. I, I forgot. I'll, I'll do better. Please, don't quit on me. OK, but remember, it's not what you say. It's what you do. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Let's go for a walk. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. Welcome back here on the Colonial Sports Network. Face-off won by Robert Morris. Vaughn Jay with it. Vaughn Jay sending it over, but the face-off, or excuse me, taken back by Bentley now. Bentley trying to push it forward, cannot. Chipped at, at center ice. Oh, a big hit, Vaughn Jay stopping Capul in his track. Schmid with it now, Schmid with a backhand, and it's collected easily by Marat. So Marat will cover it up, and there will be a face-off. Let's take a look. Don't count your chickens before they hatch. In the 2016 quarterfinals, Bentley beat RMU 4-3 in game one. The Colonials came back to win game two, and then game three by a 6-3 score. One of the big storylines of that weekend was Bentley losing two of their star players in game three to food poisoning. They could not play, and that was a big factor for them as they were knocked out of the playoffs by Robert Morris. Bentley looking to flip the script and do the same thing to that, to the Colonials that Robert Morris did to them two years ago. McDonald with it now. Over to Lombardozzi, Lombardozzi back to McDonald. McDonald sends it all the way around, collected by Marat. Marat off the boards. And it's sent forward by Dorowitz. Spencer Dorowitz throwing it towards Polino. Polino covering it up. And that will be it as some pushing and shoving at the end of that play. So far, I mean, the Colonials, I love it when they play a fast game. In my opinion, that's their best game. And if that's what Bentley wants the Colonials how they want the Colonials, I think the Colonials are going to give it to them. And I don't think that's what Bentley wants. If they want to push the series, the three games against the Colonials, they will out, out skate you. I mean, Raw Powers is just, there he is right there, a maniac up and down the ice. And if you want to challenge the Colonials that way, I think they'll take it any day. Bentley with an icing, and I think that's one thing that the Falcons have done better when they played the Colonials here, their first game of the season, they had five icings within five minutes of play. It was kind of insane that they just kept throwing the puck down the ice. They didn't have too many last night. But like you said, I think the pace is going to be the big thing for the Falcons. They're not a speedy team. The Colonials, you, they have that speed. But Bentley, not the type that will beat you on their skates as that puck, I believe, went out of play. And so it will be a stoppage of play as Loria coming off the ice, a bit shaken up. That was number seven, Michael Loria, the junior out of Gibraltar, Michigan. I believe he's sitting in the back on the bench. We'll see how he is for the rest of this game. Right now, face off in center ice. 
Ferguson Santerno. Ferguson wins the faceoff for Robert Morris. Off the boards, but out of the reach of Timmy Moore. But the Colonials look to try and take it back. That will be off sides. Colonials come back on sides and will go back towards the puck. Bentley with it. Bentley going across ice out of Kyle Schmidt's reach. And it goes all the way back to Marat. Marat off his stick, covering the puck. And it will be a faceoff now in Robert Morris's zone. I thought that was an awkward stop by Marat there. I was, I was like, confused what he was trying to do for a second, but he was, you know, trust him. I was just was thrown off there a little bit, Spencer. It seemed like he was a bit hesitant as yeah. to what he wanted to do. Face off one by Bentley. Broussard shot deflected away by Marat. And then it goes into the netting. And a stoppage of play. Taking a look at Francis Marat, 37 saves on 38 shots. And I'd argue one of those, that one shot wasn't even a shot. Yeah, in my eyes, he had a shutout. I mean, it didn't even come off of a, the stick, came off of multiple skates as it pinballed into the goal. Broussard trying to touch that the oar, but they were out of play, not knowing, not on the same page, excuse me, but Bentley taking it back. Santerno forward to Capula, Capula's shot. Goes deflected wide by Marat. Good save by Francis Marat. Capula with it again. Capula sending it across ice. Another shot goes off of, I believe it went off of the captain for the Colonials, Alex Bonje. Forward now. Matthew Graham with it, but Graham gets it taken away by Savante. Savante gets pushed hard by Bonje. And forward after a big hit. Soliev. Pushing Bonje, and I believe there's going to be a stoppage of play. I think it's going to be an icing on Robert Morris. So 10 minutes, 13 seconds. Taking a look at the season statistics of Francis Marat. A 13-13 and a three record. 2.55 goals against average. 783 saves. And of course, a save percentage of .913. So Marat, again, like we mentioned, I think his best game of the year was last night. Looking to try and do the same thing and repeat tonight. Of course, the Falcons, it's a season on the line. They're going to do everything they can to try and shoot the puck better. And I believe that in this first period, they have done that compared to last night's first period. Both teams, for the most part, it was a very quiet first period. That shot taken in a goal! Deflecting that one forward, and Bentley's on the board. And that was just take a second look at some quick action off of the face off by the Falcons, and they were just able to squeak one right past Frankie and Net. I believe that was Cody DePork who took the initial shot, and Charlie Marchand touching it forward. Take a look at the replay. Pork with it, we see Marshan to the right side, and yes, it is Marshan right there. Beautiful tip. Nothing Marat could do there. And so the Falcons responding to the Colonials' goal. 1 1 in this first period. Watt with it now. Watt over to Coleman. Coleman's able to reach out and get to it. Coleman takes a shot. Easy save for Aiden Polino. Sent all the way around now. Fabian forward, but Israel and Buchanan, a bit of an elbow there, dangerous play. Referee noticed it, said not do that again. Jago sending it forward. Puck behind the net. Sent forward. And now here comes Bentley with it. Per Cusick. Perkisi stops, throws it in front. Laurie was there, but couldn't get a stick on it. Laurie behind the net, taken by Callen. Drew Callen, forward to Seekow. Seekows, out of the reach of Gorowski. Laurie with it now for Robert Morris. Laurie stops, Perkusik with a shot. That one goes away, saved by Polino. Callen with it. Callen throwing it towards Murat. Murat with a glove save, collecting that one easily. Well, I don't know if you noticed, Spencer, but Polino literally fell into his net and 
that would have been a big opportunity for the Colonials to capitalize there as he had a hard time getting up. Big opportunity to capitalize, but Bentley capitalizes and ties this game up. 1-1 here on the Colonial Sports Network. Welcome back here on the Colonial Sports Network. Robert Morris scoring first, but Bentley responding. Charlie Marchand for the Falcons tying the game up. And with eight minutes and 30 seconds remaining in this first period, a very different first period than we saw yesterday. No score after one yesterday. And what I think might have been the quietest period I've ever seen in hockey very minimal yeah. shots, but today it's a different story. Like I said, you know, the second game is always different. But like the Colonials came out with a more crisp game plan after seeing what Bentley was going to bring to them uh, from last night. I'd argue both teams, I think. They know what each team is going to give them, and they're going to try and react to that now. Face-off one by the Falcons, another face-off one. Something to note there. Bentley will take it again. Callen back to Lombardozzi. Lombardozzi forward. Gorowski did not touch it, so it will be an icing on the Falcons. Faceoff will be all the way in Falcon territory to the left of Aiden Polino. The sophomore goaltender. Past couple minutes, it seems like it's been all Bentley when it comes to shots. Colonials had, I believe, one or two opportunities, but for the most part, Bentley doing a good job. Israel with a shot, and just like I had mentioned, almost jinxed it. Shot for Robert Morris is saved. Take over a little bit, uh, start to dominate, but you know, shots like that is what's going to keep the Colonials in this game. You know, tied right now in the you know last minutes of the first of the first period here, you know, still not, you know, completely breaking and letting Bentley take full charge. Face off one by the Falcons. Santerno with it over to Schmidt. That one into the corner. Giles battling Santerno. The big hit. Fans wanted a boarding call on that one. A dangerous, gonna be a cross check actually. But there is no call on it. As Robert Morris will take over, Mantenuto. Over to Coleman. Coleman sending it forward. That's touched up. By Buchanan, so no icing. Mantenuto's shot. Tough angle, and it goes wide. Giles forward to Graham. Graham makes a move. Two players on the ground in the corner. That's Giles on the ground. He was covered up. And almost an opportunity for Capula as it went by him. Capula swings and misses on that, but Capula was all over Giles. And they're still going back and forth. Referee is right there to see it. Nothing called. Capula and Giles both going on the bench. They're angry at each other. Giles still yelling at him. Moore with it over to, uh, he was looking for Ferguson, but couldn't get it to him. Taken by Moore, still on sides. Jimmy Moore, he's got a couple sticks on him. That's Hamlet. And McDonald takes over for the Falcons. Seekhouse, or excuse me, it's Dabian. Davian over to McDonald. McDonald's got Hamblin in front. Hamblin takes a shot. Save made by Murat. Hamblin passing it back, but it goes to Ferguson. Ferguson with it now. Over to Tonj. He's got powers in the slot. Tonj stops. Throws it in front. Ferguson. That one goes over the net. Ferguson throwing it back, but nobody home for that one for Robert Morris. Taken by Bentley. Oh, player goes down for Bentley. No tripping call on that one. Robert with it. Robert over to Watt, and he couldn't pull the trigger. Couldn't get his get the puck on his stick. Zafonte with it now. Long pass to Zafonte. He throws it in front off of Israel's stick. Good defense by Eric Israel. Coleman with it now. Coleman pushing it forward to Watt. 
Coming all the way around, Soliev off his feet. Israel with it. Israel goes around, circles around. Eric Israel with a long time with the puck. A couple circles, his shot. It's kept into the shoulder of Aiden Polino, and play will stop. Right there before the stoppage, the refs just stated how they were gonna, you know, how this game is gonna be played. It's gonna be aggressive. There could have been a few calls. You know, Bentley bench was um, you know, really looking for some calls, but they're, but they're gonna let them, let let all the guys play it out and. This is some great playoff hockey so far. I think Bentley a little frustrated. The Colonials have had two power plays so far in this period. Bentley has yet to go on the power play. Taking now four guys for Bentley, but nobody's able to get it. Three on one for Robert Morris. Watt can't get it. That shot goes wide. Bentley had everybody go forward on offense, and the puck went behind all of them. The Colonials had a big opportunity there. Gantus with it now. Gantus over to Coleman. Coleman to Dorowitz. But it goes off with Dorowitz stick. Gorowski. Over to Brett Orr. Brett Orr forward looking for Drew Callen. Callen just touching it forward so he can get off the ice. Comes all the way back. Orr with it now. Touched by Coyne, so no icing. Coin with it. That goes off of a Bentley stick. And taken now by Robert Morris. For Cusick forward. For Cusick over to Loria. Loria stops, shot. Taking another shot. For Cusick can't get it towards the net, though. Taken by Bentley now. Bentley forward, Kyle Schmid. Schmid gets that touched away by Bonjay. It goes past the blue line, and it will be an offsides on the Falcons. Taking a look at the replay here. Loria stopping, waiting, and then taking the shot. And Perkusic tried to get the it rebound, but he timeout. could not. Immediate timeout in a very exciting first period. Four and a half minutes remaining here on the Colonial Sports Network. Well, Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes. But with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're good? What? Oh, you still have prediabetes. Big time. Welcome back here on the Colonial Sports Network, a tie game 1-1. For Robert Morris and Bentley here at the Colonials Arena. With about four and a half minutes remaining in this first period. We thank you for tuning in. My name is Spencer Witt. Ian Kist alongside of me. And Ian, I think this is so far a very evenly matched first period. Yeah, when it looks like either team is starting to get any sort of momentum, it kind of just it, it shifts. It's like the, you know, this game is being played in it shifts of momentum. You know, both teams are, are getting off, you know, some hard shots. You know, both goaltenders playing, playing pretty well. Both defenses, you know, each team's given up. You know, we saw the Falcons on a uh, corner side through and one opportunity there before the uh, last media timeout. So each team kind of is getting, the, getting their own chances. Um, and that's how we have a tie game right now. Colonial is taking over on a turnover, but we'll have to push back because they would have been off sides. Throwing it forward. Tonge with it, Marshand all over him. Marshand, the goal scorer. Ferguson throws it in front, and a save made by Polino. Almost a rebound opportunity for number 24, Alex Tonge, but Polino covering up. So a faceoff will be in Bentley's zone. A little under four minutes remaining in this first. Period. Antonuto and Callen taking the face off one by the Falcons, but taken now by Robert Moore. Still batting for it, actually. Correction. Gorowski, I know it's going to leave, leave, leave it off for Tanner Jago. Jago with it at center ice, pushing forward. Antonuto is able to touch it up and then send it all the way down. No icing call on this one. Buchanan will take it. Buchanan passes it back to Gorowski. Here comes Matt Seekhouse. Seekhouse with it. He's got Callen in the middle. He 
Drops it off for Jago. Jago throwing it in front. Callen was there for it, but couldn't touch it up and put it into the net. That one goes off of the skate of number nine, Mantenuto, and up into the rafters. So play will stop. Face off to the right of Francis Marat. Three minutes, nine seconds remaining in this first period. Ferguson to Pork, to Pork winning the faceoff for Bentley, thrown in front off a of body. De Pork fighting for it with Gantus. It goes back to Ferguson. Ferguson trying to throw it forward, and it will be an offside if they don't check up. They do, Bentley. Almost a home run pass looking for Tonj. Tonj able to try and touch it, but it's pushed away by Polino. Tonj almost got his stick on it on an almost perfect pass. I wasn't even really expecting, he was just trying to throw it down the ice. Ferguson with it now, Ferguson back to Tonj. Tonj dropping it off for Ferguson. He's going to drop it off for Bonjay. Bonjay back to Ferguson, great passing. But Ferguson whiffs on it. Taken by Bentley. Zafonte just throwing it. And it actually got caught by Marat. Mar and then after it goes all the way down, Anner Jago will take it. Jago to Santerno. Santerno throwing it across. Kyle Schmidt looking for it. And Capula down there as well. Capula getting it. Jago throwing it in front, but it's blocked away by Coleman. A couple of players fall for Robert Morris. Coleman with Dorowitz. Coleman to Dorowitz, but he couldn't put it on, on net. Taken back by Bonjay. Bonjay to Giles. Giles. Sending it around into the left corner. After battling, Bentley takes over. Santerno with it. A minute and a half remaining in this first period. Santerno in the corner. Gantus will take over instead, though. Gantus comes back, drops it off for his defensive partner, Eric Israel. Israel to coin forward to Loria. Loria with it. Loria stops, takes a shot. Save made by Polino. Perkusik, Perkusik falls down, now Bentley. They're coming back on offense, Gorowski over to Callen. Callen gets a stick on, Callen takes a shot, and it's saved by Marat. One minute, One minute remaining in the period, Eric Israel, Israel with it, Israel forward, and the Colonials are offsides. Yeah, the Colonials in that whole time was, you take a second look at the save by Aiden Polino, but, the Colonials working too quick. I mean, you know, missed, missed passes, um, just working ahead, you know, the offsides. And I think, the, the, you know, the Colonials is trying to do too much um, the last, you know, minutes of this game. So they need to slow down. I mean, they, they need to, you know, not force things. When the Colonials start to force, you know, it, it doesn't go their way more than not. So, you know, we'll see, you know, how, you know, they adjust heading into the second period here in just a few seconds. Colonials winning the face off. Mantenuto throwing it. it. Goes off a body in the cross ice. Taken by Hamlet. About 40 seconds remaining in the period. Hamlet's able to pick the pocket of the Colonials and he'll send it forward. One thing to note is you take a look down below and a goal by Bentley. I believe it's Davian who scores for the Falcons. And with 23 seconds remaining, it's the Falcons taking their first lead of the night. Yeah, Bentley just crashing the net. Maybe take a, another look. Take a look at the replay of the puck. Was taken by the captain, Alex Bonje, but Bonje, it goes off of Davian's stick and a tough bounce for Robert Morris. And almost a gift for Bentley. Davian's able to just push it into the net. Not the way you wanted to end the first period if you're Robert Morris. That's the definition of just being in the right spot at the right time, able to get the stick out and you know turn turn a pass into a turnover and, and then into a goal. I was gonna mention some unfortunate news. If you're Colonials fans, Ferguson takes a shot. 
Where's the puck still at the feet of a couple players? Jamming at it, but tanking out. I was going to mention that the Colonials, unfortunately, the women's team lost to Mercyhurst 5 3. And the Colonials right now losing to the Falcons is some pushing and shoving. And some frustrated Colonials. That's Elias Gantus. Still barking at the players. His stick is on the ice. An interesting first period, to and say the least. And Coach Schooley, with a couple seconds left, he stepped down to start walking to the locker room, and he hit the Colonial behind in frustration behind the bench. So he is unhappy of how you know, his team finished at last 30 seconds or so. And, you know, unfortunate, but if you take you know, a second look at you know, how this period ended, how the goal turned out to be you know, very unfortunate, but Coach Schooley not happy, not happy with his team's play right there. Colonials frustrated with the end of that first period, but they have two more periods to try and turn it around. And on the other hand, Bentley looking to survive and force a third game. As it's 2-1 here in the first period and do not go anywhere. Still two more periods to play here on the Colonial Sports Network. You've messed up your son's haircut. Do you try to fix it? Work with what you've got or show solidarity. Thank you, babe. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Welcome back here on the Colonial Sports Network. It was a late goal by Bentley to give them the 2-1 lead. Kind of give you a little bit of a recap here. Luke Lynch scoring the first goal for Robert Morris off of a Drew Callen penalty for Bentley. We take a look at the first period stats. 14 shots for Bentley, 11 for Robert Morris. Face-off win percentage, Colonials winning 60% of the face-offs compared to Bentley's 40. And like I said, Colonials converting on a power play, not converting on the next. But then they were able to score, or excuse me, Bentley was able to score off Charlie Marchand's tip-in. And then Bonjay giving the puck away late in that first period is the reason that the Falcons are leading right now as Jonathan Dabian scored for Bentley. Jimmy Moore taking it. Moore gets tripped up. No call. Lombardozzi was on the ground. Moore couldn't get over him. Swiped at by Schmid. Sent forward by Ferguson. Ferguson just trying to push it over to Moore. He does. Moore with a shot goes wide. Thank you for tuning in here on the Colonial Sports Network. My name is Spencer Witt. Ian Kissed alongside of me on the color commentary. That puck goes flying into the air all the way back. Alex Bonjay will take it. Santerno chasing him down. Bonjay goes behind the net and comes back. The captain touches it to Timmy Moore. Actually, I should say passes it to Timmy Moore. Moore trying to touch it forward, but could not. Bonjay doing everything to try and keep that out. Gorowski with a shot. Pushed away by Marat. Callen back to Gorowski. But it's taken over by Robert Morris. Timmy Moore forward. Moore will just dump it in, and the Colonials will change their lines. Dorowitz got a stick on that puck. Goes off of Coleman. Still in play for Robert Morris. And Gantus will send it over. And it's touched by the Colonials. Taken by... Bentley, Dabian, Dabian with it, cycles around. Push forward, Colonials trying to track that down. Coleman and Buchanan, a foot, foot race. Five guys fighting for it right by the Hampton inside in the corner. That shot taken, blocked away by a player in front. McDonald with it now. McDonald he tried to get that shot but could not pull the trigger. And I believe we're going to have a penalty. Yes, it is going to be a penalty on Robert Morris. Going to be number four, Elias Gantus will go to the box for slashing. So Bentley will be on the power play for the first time tonight. Yeah, interesting, you know, with an opportunity to take the lead early here in the second period, not even three minutes played yet. It's going to be interesting to see 
you know, how they, you know, they got some hard shots off, but some of their goals have been some cheaper ones, like the end on a turnover. So, you know, an uh, 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 opportunity for the Falcons to kind of settle down as you see the puck go the opposite way, opposite of what I'm, you know, suggesting for them to do right now. <laughs> yeah, Bentley so a big moment. scoring on the first goal. Charlie Marchand with a nice tip in to give them the first one. And then the Colonials really shooting themselves in the foot when they gave up that second goal, a turnover behind the net. Davian was able to just kind of wrap it around and put it back in. That puck goes all the way down towards the corner. Tanner Jago will take it. Charlie Marchand, the goal scorer, the first goal scorer of the night. Jago to Gorowski. Gorowski with it forward, so, or it's Callen, and then chipped away by the Colonials. And Soliev cannot keep it in. Tanner Jago with it. Jago forward. He's got Seekhouse with him. Jago takes a shot, but I believe got deflected away off of a stick of a Colonial. Gorowski with it. Gorowski passes it back to Soliev. Soliev takes a shot. That one deflected away by Marat. And play stops. Sixteen thirteen remaining, about 30 seconds we'll under that in the power play for Bentley. Face off one by the Falcons. Soliev. Taken by Robert Morris. Here come the Colonials forward. Dorowitz fighting. Taken by Callen. Drew Callen. Callen with some speed. He's got Seekhouse looking for Gorowski, but couldn't get it to him. Soliev trying to keep it in. He will not. Penalty expires for the Colonials. Gantus coming back on the ice. Callen takes a shot. It goes off of Dorowitz. Dorowitz feeling that one. He's going to go to the bench. Thorowitz a little slow getting onto the bench. Puck goes all the way down, and it will be an icing on Robert Morris. Join the Army Athletic Span site. So face-off will be all the way down towards Colonial side. They will not be able to change their lines due to the icing. And right now, the Colonials not in a good spot. Yes, they, they killed a penalty, but they're just allowing some shots as we Take a look at the other playoff games. AIC won nothing over Niagara. You know. The puck was trickling away from Polino and Mantenuto trailing the play. I thought he was able to just touch it in, but he could not. Oh, it would have been an easy tap in for Daniel Mantenuto. Could have tied this game back up. And each team, the Falcons had won a few moments ago on the other end. Both teams having some you know, chances, just a little tap, tap, tap it in. But unfortunately, no one is there to produce. No one there to produce. Coleman with it now. Coleman in the corner. Lombardozzi on him. Coleman sending it around to Perkusic. Perkusic behind the net. He's got a defender on him. Double players fighting for it, but Bentley will take it. It goes off of the netting, and it's stuck on the back of the net. Finally comes out. Bentley with it. Bentley just pushing it forward. Robert sending it around. He's past the red line, so no icing. Cody DePork with it. DePork over to Davian. Davian, the second goal scorer for Bentley. Robert with it. Robert in front. Perkusic tried to tip it forward, but could not. Bentley will take it back. Robert, a big hit. On one of the Colonials. Actually, correction, well, correction, a big hit there on Davian. That one goes in front of Marat. Marat with a stick on it. Just to push it away. Colonials with it. Robert Powers. Powers behind the net. He's got Cody DePork on him. Cody DePork, five foot six. Robert Powers, six feet tall. A big height difference 
there. Cody DePork, one of the smallest players in NCAA Division I hockey. But he doesn't play like he's small. He is a grinder when it comes to getting to the puck. Jago with it. Jago cannot keep it in the zone. Bentley will have to switch their lines on a delayed offsides. And they check back on sides, and Robert Morse take it. Colonial's fanning on that one. That's Robert who fanned on it. Puck still in front. Couple shots taken. Or with a slap shot, but several Colonials in front of it to block it away. Good defense by Robert Morris. As I don't know if Marat would have been able to slide over and make a save. And it will be an icing on the play. So play stops. We'll take a look at the scoreboard. AIC in Niagara. That's a final in double overtime. AIC advancing, I believe, that game 4-3. No, correction, that game, the other game that was in overtime last night, RIT and Sacred Heart, they're 2-2. With RIT winning that the first game, Sacred Heart. Headed to hockey. Heels, desperation mode. Gotta love it. Gotta love this tight, off, tight games. No blowouts in these first rounds here. Ferguson with it. Ferguson tries to make a move. Another shot. I know Moore couldn't pull the trigger. Giles with it. Giles over to Ferguson. Ferguson gets it deflected away. Santerno at mid-ice. Pushed off by Giles and then pushing it forward. Great pass to Tonj. Tonj just throwing it towards Polino. Lombardozzi off the boards. Kept alive and on sides for the Colonials. So Graham will charge for it. Taken now. Santerno pushing it forward. Marat has to kind of bump it out of the way. There was a bouncing puck towards him. Puck in the boards. Ferguson wrapping it around, but it goes back towards him. And then Giles with it now. Giles off the boards to Graham. A good pass to Graham, but Graham can't keep the puck on his stick. Jago all over him. Bentley taking over. Bentley really winning the game on the boards, I think. Oh, big hit there. Elias Gantus all over Tanner Jago. And I think they're going to call a penalty on it. Man, I mean, that was unfortunate. You know, uh, a big hit. As we take a look. That hit was so hard, it knocked the top coverings of the glass off. Oh, wow. See one of those top coverings there, the plastic with the black piece. And that is a hit when you, when you uh, partially break part of the glass. Big hits, big opportunities, but still a 2-1 game here on the Colonial Sports Network. Messed up your son's haircut. Do you try to fix it? Work with what you've got. Or show solidarity. Thank you, baby. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Can you get a shot of one of those pieces? All right. What? Colonial Sports Network. Uh, we had to stop play right now. We're on a media timeout, but that hit on Elias Gantus that he put on Tanner Jago, it knocked one of the plastic coverings on the top of the ice off. As you see, they're all across around the boards, and there's a or there's a ladder, a man with a ladder out there to have to replace that. So play is currently stopped for that. You see, take a look at one of those pieces that one just That's hanging on by a thread, but the other one right there. came off. Great camera work to show one of those. I want to make a WWE reference right now. Who wants to walk with Elias? Especially with a big hit, Elias, WWE superstar. Actually from my hometown of Plum Borough, Pennsylvania. I'm proud of that, but uh, you know, a big hit we see you know on the ice and in the WWE rink. This is 
not too far away from a cage match <laughs> when it comes to the physical play of this game. It's getting, I, I want to use the word chippy right now. I think well, both I, of these teams, chippy. both these teams I think are really kind so, of frustrated with each other. We got so some time to, time to get here. a dip out. You know, it's getting chippy. Time to bring the dip out. We're having a party. Chips and dip. You better be hosting that party, right? Going to be at your house sure, tonight? Sure, why not? All right. Everybody, everybody's invited. Ian Kiss's house tonight after this game <laughs> for the parties. You can tell we got some time to try and talk over. I'll give you an update again. It's 2-1 in favor of Bentley. As you got to wonder how, how experienced you think these guys are putting these pieces on because you know, they, they usually just sit on the ice yeah, all year yeah, round, yeah, right? Like you, how often does one get... How often do these, one of these you know things I mean? come off? It could be a situation. It looks like they know what they're doing, though, but it could be, how, how did we fix this? Like we never had, a, never had to deal with this before, but it looks like, it looks like you know, it's the just maintenance a, workers got it under control, the ice crew, rather. It's just, I believe what it is, just a piece to keep the glass together. So it's just a plastic piece, and you put it right on top, and then it locks in. Oh, that's making me hungry there. Aven down with the shot. The sideline cam out in the 1921 club. He's making us hungry up here. That looks delicious. Beautiful shot of a pulled pork sandwich. And they eat good down in the 1921 club. Maybe the be a member, so maybe, you know, I might be a member someday. Let's take a look at our player to watch, who potentially could be a member as well. Alex Tonj for the Colonials. Two goals, four shots last night. He had a plus two on the night. He will be a player to watch here as well as the Colonials look to get back. We are underway again after a little delay. Face off. It will be stopped. And play will stop as the puck goes all the way down. And so with 11 minutes and 10 seconds remaining in this period, a face off to the right side of Aiden Polino. Face off one by Bentley. Goes off of Seekhouse's skate. Touched forward, still in play. A big opportunity for Watt. Watt, can he get it to Dorowitz? Could not. Couldn't tell who that player was. Off of a bad pass by Bentley. Almost a costly turnover. And the puck goes all the way down for an icing. Play will resume on the other side of the ice as we take a look at that opportunity. Watt had a decent pass, to say the least, to Dorowitz, but Dorowitz couldn't get his stick on the puck and give a little backhand to it. Face off one by the Colonials. Israel takes the shot, goes wide. Gantus battling with Seekhaus. Seekhaus and Israel in the corner. Seekhaus takes over. Over to Soli, or over to Callen, excuse me. Gorowski sent forward. And that one might have been blocked away by Marat. Not sure if it got to him or not. That rhymes. <laughs> Pass all the way over to Gantus. Gantus behind the net. McDonald in front of it, staring him down. Gantus go to the left side. Now come back. McDonald following every footstep. And Gantus will finally come out to the left side. It was touched forward by Robert Morris to no icing. Graham in the corner. Lynch with it. Lynch dragging his feet. Coming back to Graham. Graham gives it off to Powers. Powers with a shot. Goes wide. Robert. Robert can't control the puck, though. Taken by Orr and the Falcons. McDonald. McDonald in front. That one goes wide. Lynch with it now. Two on one for Robert Morris. Lynch. Oh, it gets deflected away. Opportunity. Mentinuti scores. Off of the rebound. Well, off of the pass that gets deflected away. Mantenuto trailing the play. Throws it towards the net, and it goes in for Robert Morris. That looked like it was going to be the same exact setup from last night's first goal with Timmy Moore to Alex Dodge. But it was deflected, but the Colonials was in panic. They're still able to push the puck to the net. We're going to take a second look at it here. Take a look at the replay. Lynch. Oh, Bear, it looks like it's going to be a similar play, but a defender in the way, but the Colonials don't give up on the play. 
goes and off it of goes past Polino. Sorry there, Spencer. That's a fr yeah. I was gonna say it goes off of Lombardo's. You skate and Mantenuto who's trailing it. That's a frustrating one if you're Polino. That's not a play you got it. You can give up as it went right in the five hole. Both goalies giving up some frustrating goals here to tie it at two. You know, second goals are both. You know, good plays by the opposing teams. So the Colonials back in this game, tying it up. Timmy Moore with it now. Moore at center ice, over to Tonge. The Lombardozzi was all over him. Capula sending it down. Giles and Capula in the corner. Oh, giving up Santerno. That's Alex Tonge, another pass given up. Or excuse me, that was Bonje. Another pass given up by Alex Bonje. Player is named Alex. Ferguson forward, Timmy Moore in front of the net. Trying to give it back to Moore. Shot taken by Tonge. And it's deflected away. Taken now by Robert Morris at center ice. It's pushed away. And Soliev. Pushing it forward. Powers with it. Robert Powers forward to Tonge. But a bad pass and another opportunity for the Falcons. But it goes away and Falcons will retreat. Soliev pushing it forward behind the net. Powers will take over. Sending it, sending it around to Loria. Loria forward to Perkusik. Kirkusik in the corner. He's got Cannon on him. Gloria with it, but now taken by Suliev and the Falcons all the way back, though. And Elias Gantus will take it. So now here comes Eric Israel. Israel is on his knees before, but he got back up. Taking it all the way down. And Gloria with a shot. Not a bad look for Robert Morris there. Sent forward. For Bentley, Callen with it, but it's out of Callen's reach. Lori just tried to get a stick on the puck. Lori is sliding, falling over there. Not sure what happened. Deflected away. Thrown in front, but Callen is out of the reach of that one. Jago back to Callen. Callen throwing it in front, nobody home for that one. With the exception of the Colonials, Coleman. Coleman fighting for it with Broussard. Callen with a blast, that one pushed away. And here come the Colonials. Dorowitz with it. Dorowitz comes back, takes a shot, goes wide. I think that might have been an open net for Dorowitz. He had Polino committed to the right side, and when he came back, it might have been close. Several fans reacting to that one. Watt with it now, Watt with Giles. Giles in front, deflected away by Polino. Big hit in center ice. The coaches for Bentley wanted a call, and I believe they are gonna get one. Yeah, but a lot of big hits, but now the referees are making calling these big hits as penalties, what we didn't see a lot of yesterday and today over the first period. Colonials, I believe they're gonna go to the box, and we will go to a break here on the Colonial Sports Network. Emergency plan today. Welcome back here on the Colonial Sports Network. A little over six minutes remaining in this second period. The Colonials tying it up on a Daniel Mantenuto goal. And that is where we stand right now, 2 2. 
Correction, there is no penalty on the play. I believe it might have been an offside. I don't know, it wasn't an offside. I think it just hit the netting. So there will be a face-off to the left of Polino. One by the Colonials. Grant, Grant three, right? he scores! Matthew Graham off the face-off, just shoving it towards Polino, and it goes by the right side of Polino. And the Colonials take the lead back. That is how you win a face-off and take advantage of that win, wasting maybe a second. I mean, that was, take a second look at it. That is you know, a beautiful, beautiful setup, beautiful goal. You see exactly how fast and... You see the face-off, it's one and how quick it was. That's Lynch who wins the face-off and then just Graham like, just throwing it to literally just just threw it out shoveling there. Shoveling it towards it Polino. And it works out for them. Big hit off of this face off. You can kind of see the frustration for Bentley right now. Pushing and shoving. Mantenuto with it. Mantenuto looking to try and put it in front, but could not get it to anybody. Lynch with it now. Mantenuto with it now, taking it off the boards. Right in front, and that one. Deflected away. Capula with it now for Bentley. Capula tries to get around one defender, but Mantenuto comes back to take the puck. Bonjay forward to Lynch. Lynch going down. Bentley taking over. Bentley forward to Soliev. Or Gorowski, excuse me. Callan with a shot. Gallon hit the post. Another shot collected by Marat. Drew Callen, a ringer off the post, almost tying it up. Take a look at the replay. Callen, I believe that hit game the post. Game of inches. Yeah, game of inches. You know, when you take a, a shot like that, you know, it looked like you know, Frankie may have lost where it went, couldn't get behind it, but luckily it wasn't, you know, wasn't on point or would have been a, another tie game here. Taken by Bentley now. Callen with it again. Callen around. Throwing it in front. Goes off of Israel. Israel flicking it forward. And I believe he threw it into the stands. And so play has stopped. It was just over the boards. So there'll be a face off to the right. Of Francis Marat in Colonials territory. Face off won by Robert Morris. Another thing to mention, it seemed it seemed that Bentley had been winning the face-offs, but instead it was the Colonials. And that face-off winning from that goal was so important yeah. that it was Graham was able to get to it. And it was a goal off of the face-off. We're talking so much about how the Colonials are a good face-off team, and it helps right there. If anybody tells you that you know face-off win percentage isn't great, well, you're wrong because just like that, you win a face-off, take a shot, and now you're leading 3-2 in a, a critical playoff game looking for a sweep. Bentley taking a shot. That one, oh, it goes behind Marat. It was tipped and went across the crease. Cody DePort tipped it and it went right behind Marat. Side to side, almost dangerous there. Play stopped, and it's going to be a penalty on Robert Morris. It is a medium timeout. Powers will go to the box. The Colonials will have to kill off a penalty with three minutes and 47 seconds remaining in the second period here on the Colonials Sports Network. You take a test to get your driver's license. You take a test to find out about your cholesterol. So how do you know if you have dangerous levels of radon gas in your home? Take the test. Radon is the second leading cause of lung cancer. It's odorless, colorless, and radioactive. And the only way to know if you have it in your home is to test it. Testing is quick and inexpensive. So take the test. It could save your life. Welcome back here 
for one of our players to watch, Brady Ferguson. He's a Hobie Baker Award nominee, and you can help him try and win the Hobie Baker Award. Go to voteforhobie.com and vote for Brady Ferguson. Now, not only does Brady Ferguson have the most points in the NCAA of 158 as of last night, but his face-off percentage win is nationally ranked in the NCAA. And when we talk about how face-offs are important, especially in this game after the, the goal by Matthew Graham, you know, maybe we'll see a face-off win that will turn into a Brady Ferguson goal or a goal that he sets up. Colonials winning that face-off and then tipping it forward. Good defense by Brady Ferguson, the man we were just talking about. Goes past the blue line, so Bentley had to retreat. That one off of Marat. Easy shoulder save there for Francis Marat. Marshan with it. Davian in front, jabbing at his Santerno, but Francis Marat covers up the puck. Three minutes and 21 seconds remaining in this period. A minute 30 remaining in the power play for Bentley. Colonials had already killed 30 seconds of this penalty. Just going to try and do it. With it. Santerno getting it now, throwing it across. Nobody there for it. But Marshan was able to get to it. Davian back to Marshan. He's got Jago over to the right side, trying to get it to Schmidt. Schmidt throwing it across. Nobody home to help tip that in, though. Santerno throwing it in front. Gets over to Schmidt. A little under 50 seconds remaining in the power play. Santerno with it, a big power play for Bentley right now. Big penalty kill for Robert Morris. Over to Marshan. Marshan to Jago. Jago fakes the shot. Comes back, goes to the left side, throwing it in front, looking for some help, but he gets none, and that puck goes all the way down. Thirty seconds remaining on the penalty kill for Robert Morris. Bentley taking their time with 15 seconds in this power play. Trying to set up their offense. Seekhouse to Gorowski. Grouski stops, comes back over to Broussard. Broussard takes a shot, rebound. Callan with another shot, goes wide. Powers comes off of the penalty box. Penalty over for Robert Morris. Ferguson going to send it forward, but it's out of the reach of everybody, and that will be icing. A minute 37 remaining in the period. Francis Marat. Standing tall on a couple opportunities for Bentley. We take a look at the stat to note. Goals against average. Christopoulos for Air Force leading. And then it's Durant. And another player followed by the two players who are playing tonight. Marat and Polino. Polino has given up three goals tonight. I'd argue two of them, I think, were his fault, and the other one wasn't. Marat giving up two goals. I'd say one of his, one of them was a bit frustrating that Marat gave up. The other one, just bad defense, giving up a turnover. Nothing Marat could do. This puck in the corner. One minute, one minute remaining in the period, and it's another penalty. This one's going to be... I think it's going to be on Robert Morris again. Referee stopping play on a penalty. Players still angry at each other. They're going to put both players in the box. Number six for Bentley, number five for Robert Morris. Brendan Hamblett for Bentley. And Sean Giles for Robert Morris with 56 seconds remaining in the period. The 
see what the call is. Referees having a little trouble talking to the official that is inside the glass. It will be a face-off in Robert Morris's zone. It's going to be a two minutes for both teams, two-minute minors. And so face-off to the right of Marat, four-on-four four hockey for the remainder of this period, potentially. Marshan with it. Marshan throwing it towards Marat. Marat catching that like a baseball, and play stops. Yeah, quick shot. Off of the faceoff, Bentley, sure, both teams, Bentley trying to make something out of this. You know, four on four here. We tie it before we go in. Bentley tied it. Actually, Bentley took the lead at the end of the period last time. So we'll see what they can do this time. They're trying to do the same thing the Colonials did a little bit. Win the, win the faceoff, take a quick shot, and get past. The goaltender, Jago with it, Tanner Jago. Gives it back to Marshan. Marshan takes a shot. Marat got a piece of it. It goes away. 20 seconds remaining in the period. Gorowski. Gorowski comes all the way back. Israel all over him. Israel's gonna get called for a penalty as Gorowski went down. Going to be four on three hockey for the next 12 seconds of this second period. Eric Israel not happy at all with that call. To take a look at the replay. Gorowski coming around the right side. That is picky tacky. As I don't know. I don't like that call yeah, at I mean, all. That, that, he, that didn't seem like he fell. I mean, last night it was the, the, it was the Falcons who like you know, the, the refs let the Colonials play a little bit, but now the refs not letting any team make go away with a, with, with a penalty. Grouse, kind of just fell down himself. Yeah. He's <laughs> leaning forward. I don't know what, I don't know what. shot, save my Marat, Marat, and it goes wide. And that will end the period. What a save by Francis Marat in the closing seconds of the second period. Colonials escape. And they lead 3-2. Do not go anywhere. We've got one more period remaining. The Colonials looking to sweep the series. Bentley looking to just survive and play tomorrow. Do not go anywhere for the third and potentially final period here on the Colonial Sports Network. Welcome back here to Colonials Arena here on the Colonial Sports Network. Robert Morris taking on the Bentley Falcons. One more period remaining potentially. Let's take a look at the second period stats. Bentley out shooting the Colonials. Colonials with more block shots and have 61% face-off win, including one of those big face-off wins that gave the puck to, to Matthew Graham to score for Robert Morris. Penalties four to three. Colonials had four penalties in that second period. Also, one thing to note that this period will start with a four on three. A minute three remaining in the minor penalties for two players. One for Bentley, one for Robert Morris. And then Bentley will be on a power play. Colonials winning that face off and then sending it all the way down the ice. Hey, welcome you back here to the broadcast. My name is Spencer Witt. Ian Kist alongside of me as my co-pilot. Bentley with it now, Soliev. This is Jago. 
Jago back to Sulia, back to Jago. Jago looks, sends it over to Schmid. Sam Turner, the other man on the ice for Bentley. Well, Schmidt's shot, he fanned on it, frustrating there, and he knows it, Marat covering it up. So a face-off to the right side of Marat. Four on three, 30 seconds remaining on the two minor penalties, and then Eric Israel will stay in the box, and Bentley will be on a power play. Colonials won the face off and then send it all the way down the ice. Schmid with it now. Schmid over. This is Jago. Schmid, Jago, Santerno, and Soliev on the ice. Ferguson, Timmy Moore, shot taken. Santerno, and they score! Bentley tying it back up as Santerno persistent on the puck, I and he to, gets it past Marat. I need to take a second look at this because it looked like originally Marat made the save, put his two pads together. I mean, I want to know where it squeaked in at as it happens very, very quickly. Jago with it over to Soliev. Nice up. It went back to Jago. I believe Jago took the shot here. He does. And Marat making the initial save, and we see Santerno there, and he oh, just the gets side. it over the pad of Marat. A tight angle for oh, Santerno. Impressive goal. It's another one of those, you know, unfortunate goals that Marat has given up tonight. Second, in my opinion. Lynch with a shot. So Colonials and Falcons back to full strength. I believe that penalty. I believe that shot there was right at the end of the two penalties, so it will be a power play goal for Bentley. McDonald trips. No call on that one as the puck went all the way across the ice. He did touch it, though. It is a power play goal for Luke Santerno, the freshman. Now, one thing to note about these Falcons is that they're a very young team, only a couple seniors. Kyle Schmidt being one of them. And you have the Colonials, who are one of the oldest teams in the NCAA, with very few freshmen on this team. Callen sliding across the ice and going into Marat. Net this lodge. Play is stopped. Let's take a look at the replay here. That's Callen and Giles, or Dorowitz, excuse me, and Marat down on the ice. He's a little slow to get up, but he has Let's gotten up. up. And that is that's scary if you're coach goalie in the rest of the Colonials to see your goaltender go down pretty big like that with you know a, a tied game looking to sweep in the first round of these AHC playoffs. And to make matters worse, Robert Morris will have to kill another penalty. The Falcons on a power play is Dorowitz, Spencer Dorowitz going into the box. Huge opportunity for Bentley to potentially take the lead in this game. Now you have to wonder, how will the Colonials respond? It's been, I, with the exception of the two penalties back and forth to each other, I think the Colonials have had four straight penalties in this, to yeah. them. The Colonials went into the second period, no penalties against them, I and then it. came out with four, and now more than four on four. the game. I believe they have six on the game, actually, because I think the Eric yeah, Israel gave them five, and now here's six. So Bentley winning the faceoff, shot taken by Jago, another shot, they score! The senior Kyle Schmidt gives Bentley the lead and just like that, penalties will kill you and the Bentley Falcons capitalize. Yeah, the man advantage won the faceoff and was able to push, 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 beat Marat for the second time in less than three minutes. A little over two minutes played and Colonials all of a sudden see this lead evaporate. Take a second look at it here. They went back. Very patient were the Falcons. Yeah, the Falcons doing a good job on their passing. Very well. I think that's one thing I've noticed in this period is that the Falcons have passed the puck well. Jago shot it and then it went off of Marat's pad save, I believe, and then Schmidt was right there for it to put it in. On a, on also a tough angle, but he's able to put it in the back of the net. And the senior who has been fairly quiet with the exception of the goal last night. I mean, that's not really 
I wouldn't give him credit with that goal, with all due respect. Technically got credit for it last night. But tonight, he does answer with a goal. And right now, the Falcons with the lead. Here come the Colonials. How will they respond to this? Penalties will kill you if you're Robert Morris. You had mentioned it before. Don't. <laughs> one of your keys to the game, I believe, right? Second key yeah, to the limit, game. Limit the penalty kills. That's not something they will do. They were. They didn't do it last night either. The Falcons weren't able to score on it. Gantus with it now after it gets stolen away. Gantus takes a shot, and that one goes into the netting. So, we'll take a look at the replay. Better angle here is Schmidt send it back to Jago. We see Jago at the blue line take the shot, and it gets deflected away, and it, it goes right to him, perfectly put. Nothing that anybody could do. Kyle Schmidt. Scoring for them. Powers, he's got Davians on him after the Colonials winning the faceoff. It has been all Bentley right now, it seems. Colonials very frustrated. Tonj gets pushed into the boards. Two players getting pushed into the board. Derek Schooley angry, saying, yelling at the referee, saying that that's been happening all game. Not happy, happy at referee Kenny Gates. Bentley flicking it forward. McDonald going to try and run it down. He does not. Powers wins the battle, and it will be icing. 15-59 remaining. And a very interesting start to this third period. Colonials went from up 3-2 to down 4-3 yeah. in three the minutes. The Colonials just kind of had to you know, score one or two more goals or just killed, you know, to secure this game at the very most. All they have to do is just play some lockdown defense, but have not done that so far, committing penalties that have, that have two, turned the points. And two two players, players tied up. Two players are down here tied up. That's McDonald and Lynch. McDonald, you could, you could see him grimacing in pain. McDonald. Slow to get up, he was caught with Lynch. Lynch tried to pull his stick out, could not, because McDonald was on top of it. McDonald is gonna go to the bench. No penalty or anything like that, but stop as you play. This game is just getting chippier and chippier as it continues, as it goes on. And, and that's something that the Colonials have to work on. They can't give up penalties on the chippiness of this game because Bentley's gonna capitalize. Shot taken, whoa, it goes right over. Polino, I don't think he saw it. Battling for it behind the net. Bonje, Bonje's shot. Goes away as it went off of the stick of one of the Bentley players in front. Lynch with it off the boards to himself. Over to Mantenuto, he's got Graham to his left. Trying to give it to Graham, cannot. And thrown across again. There was a diving player, Santerno. As he touches the puck there, diving just to try and you know, get a piece of the puck. And I, I mean literally diving, not <laughs> laying out on the ice. He actually like, jumped and dove. Lynch into the boards. Lynch is just sitting down. He's frustrated right now. His stick is caught on Buchanan. I should say Buchanan's stick is caught on him. And so play has stopped. And I, I think the Colonials are really getting frustrated right now. I mean, I think they're, they're frustrated that they're, you know, not only that they're, they're down after coming into this period with the lead of 3-2, but the refs are just calling everything now and not letting them play after. I think the refs, like I said earlier, that the refs set the, the precedent that they were going to let them play is playoff hockey, but now there's some ticky-tacky goals or uh, penalties being called that are lead, turning into goals. That's why I think where the Colonials are getting frustrated that they thought the refs would be able to let them, you know, play, but now they're down because of the, you know, having to serve penalties. Playoff hockey at its finest for both Bentley and Robert Morris. Bentley after Colonial, or they won the faceoff.
Jantus, his line mate, sends it forward. Dorowitz touching it forward. Coleman trying to get to it. But instead, it's Lombardozzi in front. A little dangerous for Polino there. Off the boards, kept in. Coleman throwing it. Goes to the left of Polino. Forward to McDonald. Good pass for McDonald. But he has to stop and just pull up. And Bentley changing their lines. Soliev on him. Polino's come back. That's Coin forward. I haven't heard much of Coin lately. Loria. The play has stopped. For Robert Morris. It is immediate. It is timeout. immediate timeout. We will take a timeout as well. Do not go anywhere. Bentley, two unanswered goals. They lead 4 3 in the third period here on the Colonial Sports Network. You take a test to get your driver's license. You take a test to find out about your cholesterol. So, how do you know if you have dangerous levels of radon gas in your home? Take the test. Radon is the second leading cause of lung cancer. It's odorless, colorless, and radioactive. And the only way to know if you have it in your home is to test it. Testing is quick and inexpensive. So take the test. It could save your life. Welcome back here to the Colonial Sports Network. 13.56 remaining as we take a look at the RMU Pet Band. Pet Band gonna be busy these next couple of weeks. They had the women's hockey game, of course. We take a look at the scoreboard of the Atlantic Hockey. AIC defeating Niagara in double overtime, like we mentioned. RIT and Sacred Heart still tied 2-2 in the second or in the third period. RIT winning the first game in overtime. So Sacred Heart, the Pioneers looking to stay alive and force a game three. Bentley looking to do the same thing here. And right now, if the score stays the same, they will. But the Colonials have 13 minutes and 45 seconds to try and change that. Good pass to Ferguson. Ferguson takes in front, drags, and then he cannot take a shot. Tons with a shot goes over the net. And I believe, I don't know if it went out of play or not, but play has stopped. Right there, that's a player I Cardinals need to see more of. It's Brady Ferguson, you know, getting ahead of the defenders, putting shots on goal because, you know, like he said after last week's game, he produces, they win, that being the Colonials. So, so we take a look at that shot by Tonja, it went wide. Robert with it now over to Powers, to Moore. Tonj, Tonj back to Ferguson. Ferguson tries to wrap it around, cannot. Mantenuto with it now, or excuse me, Robert with it now. Timmy Moore, Moore to, that's Coleman, or no, it's Tonj, excuse me. Powers with it. And it's going to be, I believe, is it a penalty on Robert Morris? Referee's got his hand up. What are they going to call? Two minutes for hooking. It's going to be hooking on Robert Morris, I think. That's what the ref made the motion for. I don't know who it was on. They are going to call it on number 12. That's Brady that's Ferguson, the assistant captain. Someone you don't want to see be sitting out for two minutes. Have, you know. Tonight, the Colonials went from not having a penalty in the first period to seven penalties now. Over the course, actually, correction, it'd be six penalties. Actually, no, I think it is seven. I believe we got one from Israel. I'm not sure. Regardless, another opportunity for Bentley to bring this lead back, or excuse me, to add to this lead. As Dorwitz fighting for it, no call. No call on a tripping. Dorwitz, he just threw a punch at Jago. Spencer Dorwitz very frustrated. Brady Ferguson slapped his stick on the 
the boards as well. He was right there, right in front of it. Very angry, the Colonials, that they're not getting any of these calls. Israel with it. That one gets taken right away. Dabians with it. Dabians takes a shot. It goes off of Moore's feet. Tried to get the Broussard, cannot. The Colonials are playing with a bit of a chip on their shoulder right now. You have to wonder if that will fire them up to try and tie this game up. Hopefully it doesn't fire them up the wrong way and they commit a big penalty down the, down the stretch here. You don't want to keep digging yourself into a hole. Bentley taking their time. Broussard with it, 40 seconds remaining in the power play. Broussard over to Soliev. He gives it up, though. Moore with it. Moore just kind of passed it forward. Broussard has to come all the way back. Aiden Polino falling over. I don't know why he fell over other than maybe Tonj tripping him, but no call again. Callen over to Seekhouse. This game is just getting out of hand, to say the least, and there's still 11 minutes remaining. Something needs to be done with this game. That play caught by Aiden Polino as we take a look at the replay. Tonj, yeah, you guys uh, got yep. him in the foot. Luckily, that wasn't called because that would have just been very lucky dagger maybe. Called. That that may have been. That, that's frustration. Yeah, like, that, like that you had is, mentioned before, that's frustration. You know, and those are the penalties players don't want. You know, cheap shots. You don't want to be that team that you know plays. You know, known to play dirty when you get down. That puck going over the net, right over Polino. Coin with it, battling behind the boards. Perkusic tries to make a move around defender cannot, but Powers with it. Powers throwing it in front, deflected away. And then looking for Capula, could not get it to him, was Hamlet. Powers off the boards, Hamlet pushing it forward, keeping it in Robert Morris's zone. 10 minutes and 30 seconds remaining in this period. Bentley up 4-3. The Colonials looking to try and get another goal. The time is ticking. Time goes down, and the nerves go up, I think, if you're Robert Morris. I mean, yeah, for sure. I mean, the Colonials have been getting some looks. I think they've just been working a little too quick. Like, they have multiple times in this game panicked a little bit, but still 10 minutes. That's a lot of time in the sport of hockey. And right there, another opportunity. Huge opportunity, Matthew Graham. But Polino makes the save on, I believe, I believe he actually poke-checked it away. You know, and that, you know, Gantus takes a shot has you know led to those opportunities for the Colonials. So, you know, just playing, you know, playing solid, composed hockey is what the Colonials need to do right now. Bonje with it, other is flicked forward. Flicked all the way down, it goes off a Bentley player in the bench. And play had stopped. Nine minutes and thirty-four seconds remaining as we take a look at this Here's replay. Graham almost Got it past Polino, and then Polino using his stick to just swipe it forward to one of his players. Nine minutes and 34 seconds remaining. Immediate timeout. 4-3 Bentley. Bentley looking to force game three here on the Colonial Sports Network. Morning, Gary. We are Get Schooled Dakar. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. That's why we're here. We're free and here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. Gary, financial aid forms. Picking a college, man. You and us we go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Go to GetSchool.com. Welcome back here. Take a look at all the different skaters at Robert Morris Island Sports Center. There's always a game of hockey or hockey of some sort or ice skating going on this place at is, the Sports Center. This place is bumping from when the doors open in the morning to when they close late, sometimes after midnight here this, at Neville Island. This game slowly going from a hockey game to just a fist fight. Seems like we're going to get closer and closer to that. Good pass here to Moore. Moore to Ferguson. Ferguson takes a shot, saved by Polino. Big save, because when those two come at you, 
Oh, Morey dropped it back, but he couldn't get it to a player. I thought he kept going. He might have got a good backhand. Buchanan with it now. Buchanan comes back. Oh, he has having trouble keeping the puck, but he is able to send it forward. Capped by Seacow, so no icing. Eight minutes, 53 seconds remaining. And I believe that's going to be a hand pass of some sort. Saw 14 kind of slap at the puck. He allowed to touch it, but not push it forward. He can't. Just can't move it like that. And that's that's the reason that there will be a face-off in the zone. We take a look at Brady Ferguson. Won 15 of 23 face-offs last night. He leads the NCAA with face-offs won with 491. One of the reasons why the Colonials are a very good face-off team. Although I might have jinxed it a little bit there. Bentley won that face-off. Technically, but Ferguson wasn't on the ice, so not entirely a jinx. Actually, no, right, he is on, no, that's Dorowitz, correction. Yeah, Ferguson was on the ice. Dorowitz was battling for the puck there. But it goes back to Bonjay. Bonjay right off the top of the glass. That would have been going towards us. That wakes you up a little bit. Hit the puck, <laughs> or hit the uh, glass. Would have been right, right below us, but had some scary calls when pucks go by. I remember one year ago, went off the wall behind us. That was, I was walking, uh, yesterday and during practice, one came up. If I was, if I didn't stop for a second, it actually may have hit me. My goodness, I don't know what I would have, would have done without, <laughs> a, without our Ian Kist on the color commentary. Would have had no WWE references. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what I would have done. One man show, maybe. Powers, I would have powered through. Powers shooting that one towards Polino. Polino catching it. 7.45 remaining in the game. Colonials down a goal. Bentley, four goals. Two of them on power plays. So it will be a face off to the right of Polino. Bentley wins the face off. And just flip it forward. Israel spins around Seekhouse and sends it forward as well. Loria with it. Loria takes a shot. It goes deflected away. Israel with it. Israel it goes back to Perkusik. Perkusik over to Coin. Coin takes a shot. It's deflected away. But rebound. Nobody there for that one. That's good defense by Orr getting in front of that one. Sent in front, but nobody can pull the trigger. Loria was there. Israel with a shot. It goes off the feet of Callen. Callen racing back. He's going to win the puck. He's got Garowski with him. Eric Israel, though, sliding away. And good defense by your, Eric Israel. Your body in front of that. And he, he ranks nationally and blocks so far in the NCAA. Cross big ice pass. That one goes off the post and very high into the air. Of course, Marat keeping his pad as close to the post as he can, so would not have gone in. Powers with it now. Powers with it over to Ferguson. Ferguson to Tonj. Tonj gets pushed down. Ferguson takes a shot. And it's caught into the chest at the logo of Aiden Polino. A big hit. Tonj took. We love seeing here another look at it. Ponch looks like he's gonna have an opportunity. They're gonna watch this big hit here first Ooh, by nice Buchanan. Shoulder, lowering shoulder his tackle, shoulder into it. It's a clean hit, good clean hit by Buchanan. I really want to call him James Buchanan, but <laughs> that is not. That was a good uh, John Cena shoulder tackle there. Another WWE reference. All right, we're at three WWE references, I believe, on the night. Three, I have be, two. I'd be right. I have one. So, well, did you make one? I, I, just, I said cage match. I don't know if that would oh, be yeah, that, good that, enough. Oh yeah, that counts. That all counts. Right, right, tied in the one. That's yeah, gotta be yeah. a record for so that's Colonial three, that's Sports three. Center. 
our Colonial Sports Network. <laughs> <laughs> our producer, Dakota Lamb, wants five by the end of the game. I don't know if I can do that. I don't watch WWE. I got to think of here. some. I got to think of some. Santerno with it on a breakaway. Santerno takes a shot. Save made by Marat. But I believe, yeah, it's going to be a penalty on the Colonials. This time it's Robert Powers. Parents getting vocal. The amount of argument. I mean, advocate for their, their sons on the ice. For what? I, I, I don't know what they called it on. I don't know. I, I, I didn't see anything personally. I didn't see what the call was, so I'm not going to, you know, quote that, but I believe it was Powers that went to the box. Two minutes for slashing on Robert Powers. This is not a game to remember if you're Robert Morris when it comes to penalties. Lynch in the corner, five and a half minutes remaining. And here come the Falcons. Schmidt with it now. Schmidt oh, look, looking for a pass. Forward to Davian. Davian Marchand over. They want too many men on the ice, is what, what the, you know, what we call the third referee, AKA the crowd, <laughs> wants. The unofficial stripes. Soliev, back to Soliev, Brissard, looking for Gorowski in the corner, Callen with it. Seekhaus also on the ice for the Falcons, and it's sent all the way down by Giles. And a bit of a sarcastic clap by the Colonial fans as they are happy about the clearance, but of course not happy about the calls. 13 seconds remaining on the power play. Powers is standing up in the box. He's going to get that out there as fast as he can. Broussard with it. Broussard takes a shot. It goes off Bonje. Two on two here. Watt with Tonj. Powers comes off the ice and sprints to the bench. Colonials back to full spring strength. Gantus with it. Gantus trying to send it in front. Cannot. Three and a half minutes remaining for Robert Morris to try and tie this game back up. Gorowski takes a shot. Caught by Marat. Couldn't think of his name for a minute. <laughs> Mantenuto. Mantenuto off the boards. Graham looking for it. Lombardo's he sends it all the way down. Gantus, good job keeping it in. And they send it around the boards. Puck going around the boards. Graham in front. Israel the shot. Oh, it goes wide. Israel with a rocket. But he sent it past the moon. Gantus in the corner now as the puck went all the way down. Around the boards. Graham with it. One deflects off a player. Marat will come out and get it. Powers behind the net. Santerno in front of the net. Gives it off to Ferguson. Here come the Colonials, two and a half minutes. Have to wonder when Marat comes off. Ferguson with it, it goes off of Marchand. Colonials still have it though, Powers. Powers throwing it in front. Flicked away by Polino and off of the netting. And two minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the third period with a face off in Bentley's side. Media timeout, final media timeout. And there's gonna be a penalty on Robert Morris, this is insane. I See, this is getting to the point where it rains at force. And for the Colonials, they're just cracked. They, the, the tartan 
that, that says that's, it all that's right the there. expression that, I that think everyone in the stands is thinking right now as we go to timeout. Very confused. Two minutes and 20 seconds remaining here on the Colonial Sports Network. Your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm. Just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. Welcome back here in the face of disgust throughout many of the fans. 4-3 in favor of Bentley. The amount of penalties. We're going to go to the stats to try and find it. Coach Derek Schooley, that shot before says it all. Confusion, frustration, just he's done. He is completely done with not only this game, but the refs. Colonial still looking to try and get a goal, but they potentially will have to play shorthanded for two minutes. As we take a look at this shot, this is a blast from Israel. It goes over the left side of Polino. Eight penalties. Eight penalties compared to on three. Robert Morris compared to and three. Heading into two of them were in the first. And after the first period of play, the Colonials had no penalties. Just put so that out there. Just want to put that out there. Colonials had no penalties. Which is amazing because now they, they're penalized for everything now. And when I made the comment earlier that the Colonials were going to, or the refs were going to let the Colonials and Falcons play some tough playoff hockey, I wasn't joking. That, that was how the first period went. And all of a sudden, calls are being made all over the place against the Colonials. When Brendan Hamlet and Sean Giles got a penalties at 1903 in the second period, the Colonials have had eight penalties overall. Not including that one, they had two before that. So let's do the math here. They had, they've had that one, two more. We're down to six. So five penalties after that penalty. Five straight unanswered penalties in for Robert Morris. And the refs are taking a look. This was we're delayed here for. I didn't even know. Yeah, the refs are taking a look at what might be the goal that shot, I believe, from. I believe that's the shot from Israel. I don't know exactly what we're looking at. We're looking at the, maybe a possible goal. We're in immediate timeout, and then all of a sudden the, the refs came over and they're looking at the replay monitor. And the refs uh, are going to come out. Change of a call. I'm not Just sure what's going looking on. for an explanation. And no goal. It looks like nothing. No goal. Scully might have challenged. I don't. I don't know. Maybe he possibly, used the coach's challenge. Maybe he got two minutes remaining. You know, why, why not? You think you'd have to think if they don't get it, anything that's close at the end of this game, refs are going to look over. Mm -hmm. So might as well go for that. But they might. They, if that was a coach's challenge, they would have lost their timeout, I believe. But regardless, a face-off for the Colonials. <laughs> High stick with contact, contact to the head for Alex Todd. So that's you don't see that one too often. No, not at all. And, and there is a penalty on Bentley. And listen to the crowd. I've never have heard uh, uh, that much celebration for a penalty called because they have not been calling anything on the Falcons, and all of a sudden they get one. Yeah, Falcon headed to the penalty box, and it's not even a power play opportunity quite yet for the Colonials. Look at 20 seconds when the 141 right now on the Colonials power play ends. The Colonials penalty ends for contact, high stick contact to the head. So kind of not even a, a, the, the best scenario for the Colonials at all because there's still two guys, it's four on four, not even a true power play, right? They'll have a true power play for about 19 seconds. Four on four, Kyle Schmidt goes into the box for Bentley. Face off one, very important here. Israel throwing it in front. Schmidt gets two minutes for hooking. 
So here come the Colonials. Robert Morris with an opportunity here. In front goes to Israel. Israel with it, throwing it in front. Lynch just pushing a man down. Lynch is on. Lynch and Jago are down behind the play, and Lynch is going to go to the penalty box. Again, when it rains, it pours. This is a hurricane right now. This isn't, this isn't a pouring <laughs> it's not, rain. It's not your August rainstorm right now. It's your September hurricane. So we're up to nine penalties on Robert Morris. But Jago will also go to the box. So we're at, what, four on three hockey. Yeah, we're running out of guys by the end of this night. Two men in the box. The Falcons have that one for hooking. Lynch is still yelling at Jago. He's got his helmet off in the box. One by the Colonials. McDonald forward. Marat just touching it. The fans are into this one. Ferguson. Four on three, actually correction, four on four now. One minute, less than one minute remaining. One four period. on the ice. Now serving in the Bentley, penalty box. My audio went. It is a penalty, but because they pulled Marat, it's four on four hockey for Robert Morris. Loria with it. Loria around the box, or around the net, to Ferguson in the corner. Ferguson over to Israel. Israel sets up for a shot. Oh, it's blocked away by Polino. Garoski forward. He's going to flick it forward. It goes off the side of the, of the netting. Colonials return a player to the ice. Five on four hockey for Robert Morris. Taunch, the Colonials are offsides. The fans are disgusted right now with 9.4 seconds remaining. We take a look at the offsides. Let's see. Oh, I don't I don't know about that one. Referees are right on it. Timeout by Robert Morris. So we have five seconds on a penalty to Tanner Jago. Nine seconds remaining in the game. And this, simply put, Ian Kist is one to, I, I would say, remember, but also forget. Yeah, I mean, it's not remember in a positive light, but this has to feel, if the Clintons don't score here, this has to fuel them in game three of tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night. Yep. Um, it, 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 that, that, I mean, you have these, these games happen. Um, the referees, you know, you're always kind of battling the, you know, the guys in black and white stripes. Um, but you know, you kind of you can't let this go into tomorrow though, because you can't commit, you know, boneheaded plays, boneheaded mistakes uh, early in that game, because then you're going to find yourself behind in like a situation today. Face off one by Bentley. On. Forward Israel. Israel touching it forward. Three seconds, two seconds, a blast by Israel. Off the netting with 0.4 seconds remaining. The fans that are still here and very vocal with this game. And I think this is one that don't expect it. You're not going to expect the goal now. Game three is going to be very, very Good interesting. He's still chirping away, and the ref's trying to tell him to calm down, but he is, he's like giving him an earful oh right goodness. now. I've never seen Coach Scully do this Zoli's before. Face. His 
he, this, he's not known for this at all. This is just the frustration, and the refs kind of look like they are ignoring him, and it finally had to come over. Ernst, Eric Ernst, referee. referee. And this is just this is just frustration, but he just wanted an explanation, I suppose. Face off, game over. Final score: Bentley will win. They defeat RMU four to three. But the game is not over yet. Still some pushing and shoving on what might be the real match. <laughs> Bentley celebrating on their own side. The Colonials not happy with that one. I don't even know. Most of them feel like they don't even want to shake the hands no, of this just, team. You shake hands, keep your mouth would, shut here, and go into the locker room. I wouldn't necessarily discredit Bentley. They gotta, you got to give them a lot of credit. They scored when they had the opportunities. The, the question is... Eric Ernst still talking to Coach Darius Scully. Scully is furious. So that will be, As he should be all she wrote here tonight. Final score. The Colonials unfortunately could not finish out the sweep. They will lose to the Bentley Falcons 4-3. to three, And that means we will have a game three here in the first round of the playoffs. So, Ian, I'm going to ask you this simple question, but could be such an elaborate answer. Final thoughts. Uh, I mean, like I said, for, for the fifth time now, when it rains, it pours. And I just I just can't, I can't get out of my head to the fact that the Colonials had zero penalties in the first 20 minutes. It looked like the, the two refs were, or the, uh, the refs that were, um, you know, letting the players play and letting college, letting college hockey happen, playoff hockey happen. And then all of a sudden, eight penalties, nine maybe at the very end. I can get an update on that. And just Colonial, Colonial the Colonials Cuts. just can't let this let this go any further than what it is going going to tomorrow. You know, let this get out of their heads. You cannot come with the mindset that the referees are against you, because if you let that happen. It's just going to spiral out of control, and you're not going to move on in 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 the, in the quest for you know the CA or the AHC trophy. Robert Morris had six penalties consecutively before Bentley had another one on Kyle Schmidt's final hooking penalty at the end of the game. Nine to five was the final. Nine five nine penalties. In penalties. Now we go back to your keys of the game. Stay out of the penalty box. That's not something that they did. Yeah. And some wonder. of the penalties were, were true penalties. Yes. But a lot of them were, you know, ticky tacky calls, especially when Israel, Eric Israel, the, the the Falcon player just fell down. Eric Israel did not do anything to push him down to the ground, but that's how the refs read it, and it is what it is. So join us tomorrow for what might be the most interesting game three we will ever witness here at Robert Morris Hockey as the Colonials will take on the Bentley Falcons in the first round tomorrow. We will both be on the call for that game. You do not want to miss that. Our final score, Robert Morris losing to the Bentley Falcons by a score of 4-3 to three for our entire broadcasting crew, our director and producer, Dakota Lamb. Myself, Spencer Witt, and for my color commentator, Ian Kiss. Ian, you got one more game here on Robert Morris Hockey tomorrow. We will definitely love sweet. to bittersweet, and it will be an interesting one at that. Final score, Robert Morris losing 4-3. to three. Thank you for tuning in here on the Colonial Sports Network.